Hello, in this video, I am going to show you how to implement ambient lighting in WebGL. So this is what I've got so far. I've just got two cubes rotating. So first of all, what is ambient lighting? Ambient lighting is just the general light that's just uniformly in the scene in the world. In real life, you can sort of, you know, think of ambient light as the light from the sun because it generally affects all the objects you know in the same way because it's so far away so ambient light is just a type of light that's the same regardless of where an object is regardless of the angle of the object so it provides some lighting at the moment there is no lighting but because there's no lighting there's no darkness either so the objects just show in their full glory but as a result you don't get shadows or anything like that so to implement ambient lighting it's not too difficult if you go to your code go to your vertex shader it could be in a array like so or it could be in a separate file does not really matter first of all we need to add another attribute attribute and this is going to be a vec free i'm going to call it vertex normal so a vertex normal or a normal i should say normal in the graphics this is a line they perpendicular to a surface if i show you right here so you've got a bunch of normals here so this is perpendicular and if you look we have this curved surface all of the normals help produce the light and obviously depending on the way the normals are positioned you know that changes the way the lighting looks okay so if we go back so vertex normal semicolon comma and next what we're going to need is a frag normal as well so we'll just put varying vec free frag normal semi colon comma okay so in here we have v texture chord texture chord we're not changing that what we're going to say is frag normal let's put a comma here before i forget i've done that before equals the m matrix times by a vec4 this vec4 will be constructed by the vertex normal and the last parameter we just put is 0.0. .0. We just need a vec4 for the calculation and we'll say dot x, y, z. So that's what we want because it's a vec3. Okay, next in GL position, we still need to do P matrix times by V matrix times by M matrix times by vec4 position 1.0. That's fine, we don't need to change that. Next, in the frag code, we need to add a frag normal and a ambient light intensity so if i put varying vec free frag normal semicolon comma and we're going to have a uniform vec free ambient light intensity like so semicolon comma and in here we're gonna have two new lines this is gonna be vec free surface normal so we're gonna calculate the surface normal which is just equals to normalize and we just normalize frag normal oopsie daisy i pressed end which takes me to the end of this file and wait there we go put a comma and on a new line, we're going to do vec for texel equals texture 2D sampler V texture chord. And for the frag color, because we've already calculated, calculated the texture 2D there, we don't need that. What we need is a vec for Excel dot RGB times by the ambient light intensity and say Texel dot A. So 
So that's just the alpha of the text out and don't need the bracket here. We need it over here and semicolon. So that's all the shaders done and pretty simple stuff. So a text cell, if you've never heard of a text cell, kind of like a pixel, but it can be even be smaller. Ooh, it's a location. I did not know that. Versus a pixel. So we have a text cell here and a pixel is what you're seeing on the screen. So a pixel could be made up of multiple text cells, multiple parts of the texture, or it could be made up of just part of the texture. So that's just the relationship between it. So as you can see in the texture, it's made up of multiple pixels, or it could be just part of a pixel. Okay, so let's just give this a refresh, make sure it's still working, which is good. I haven't even saved it, but that's fine. So if I scroll down now, what we need to do is we need to make a change after we scroll down, we got texture coordinates right here. And then next, I just wanna make sure. Okay, so we got the position, we got texture cord, Okay, and now what we need to do is provide the vertex normal. So the vertex normal. So we got position, we got texture cord. So after texture, what we're gonna do losing where I am. There we go, we're gonna put gl dot, you know what? We can actually copy and paste this because we'll just basically change what we need to change from here. So we'll copy this. Yeah, so we'll paste that there. So the first thing that we wanna do is put gl dot bind buffer and it's going to be gl dot array buffer and we're going to put vertex buffer like so and next we're going to say is we're going to have a variable called var normal attrib location equals gl dot get attrib location and we provide in the shader program and then we provide in the name of the vertex normal variable which refers to if we go up here this right here so make sure whatever you name this you you refer to it correctly over here so we've got vertex normal now and the vertex attrib pointer we're gonna say normal attrib location. We're gonna say free gl float gl true. Then we're gonna say free time by float 32 array bytes per element. And for this, we only need this to be zero. And I'll delete all of this. That's fine. Okay, and the last thing that we need to do is just enable it. So we put normal attrib location. And now, if we scroll down, the only last thing we need to do is after we use the program, we need to create the, you know, the ambient sort of lighting. So we do var ambient uniform location equals gl dot get uniform location gl dot get uni uniform location and in here we're going to put shader program comma ambient light intensity and remember this 
needs to be the same as what we put over here ambient light intensity so just bear that in mind it needs to be exactly the same so now if we just scroll back down where we got to over here well one more line left and then we can test it gl dot uniform free f and put ambient light or ambient uniform location and now you just provide your color so i'm gonna put 1.0 0.1 0.1 um, so this is red green blue it's gonna be heavily weighted on the red so if i save this reload we get some problems so we get a bunch of errors let's have a look at where these are linked to so what i like to do is go to the shaders probably a problem with the shader somewhere most likely let's make sure all the commas are there after each line that's a very common problem and there's that issue that should be a semicolon there we go i missed the semicolon so if you scroll down because we're going to edit this in a second as you can see the objects have now gone red if i was to put 1.0 or 1 for all of it we just get a uniform color and it looks the way it is you know was before but if we wanted to say that there's some sort of ambient light and it's more of a yellowish color we would do what is yellow yellow rgb what would yellow be okay yellow like 255 255 so you just do 1.01 this is zero that has i think see more of a yellowish tinge to it it's not that different because the actual crate is pretty yellow and um, sort of light brown anyway but if i was to change this to a one change this to a zero so red green blue red and blue this should get like a, like a purpley color so there we go so this is just the ambient light and that's always going to be there this is how you implement it really simple stuff if you have any questions feel free to pop me a message there'll be a link in the description to the discord group where there's almost 2,000 members and you can get help on topics like webgl opengl other programming topics emulators and a bunch of other stuff if you have any questions hit us up there and i look forward to seeing you in the next video